Hey, are you trying to give me the brush off? Because, well, that is what we're talking about today. We're talking about brushes. So let's get going. All right, let's get serious. When we talk about brushes, we're really talking about a subset of application of paint. Uh, people have been apply applying paint to things for their entire lives. You started with it with finger painting. The caveman had sticks and branches that they used to apply paint to the surface of their cave wall. Um, we use palette knives, uh, kitchen utensils, and for some of you hippies out there, there was the airbrush in the 70s. But perhaps I'm dating myself. So when we think about a brush, we're thinking many times about the ubiquitous round. And uh, when we think about brushes, we're really thinking about what is the shape of the material that's on the end, the, the fibers. What is the shape? Uh, how long is it? Uh, what are the fibers made of? Is it a natural material or is it a man-made material? And uh, even the length of the, of the, the paintbrush itself. So we're going to look at each of those and describe the, them. In fact, uh, why don't we go to an overhead shot and I'll, I'll show you some application. So this is a round. When anyone typically thinks about a paintbrush, they're thinking about the shape that we refer to as a round. And a round is even on all sides, comes to a single point, and a round can draw, the, the thing that people like about them is you can draw a simple straight line or a, a thin line with it. Now of course, you can also move it on its side, use the side of the brush and cover area. This is a synthetic uh, round and we'll talk a little bit more about synthetic or natural fibers. But I like the synthetics and I like a round. Uh, I showed you a little while ago, you know, rounds can be very large as well. So that is a round. This is a flat. They come in uh, long flats and short flats. I'll show you a large one. There's a large long flat. This is uh, actually a hog's hair, non-synthetic. And the thing that a lot of artists like about the flat is you can get a variety of brush marks like the round, but you get just more. And they So you can, of course, draw or, or paint uh, and get some different marks with it. But you can also turn it on its side and you can get a long line as well. So you can pick things out with a flat as well as covering uh, a lot of uh, a lot of territory with a flat as well. If it's longer, it makes a little bit different. Uh, same type of pattern, but it can hold more paint. And um, so, a lot of artists prefer the flats. So now let's talk about the next one, very similar to a flat, and it's called a filbert. And uh, here's a nice. Uh, a nice filbert. This is a long filbert. They come in different. This is a, a, a hogs, uh, hogs hair filbert, and uh, you'll see that it produces a, a different type of shape. Unlike the flat, the filbert has that uh, kind of a cone to the front of it, to the end of it. So it's a rounded. You see the rounded uh, shape that it makes, uh, and it like a flat can lay on its side and you get a smaller flat you can also you know get some different textures that way different visual textures to that to the long flats or to the flats um, different manufacturers have some other unusual shapes uh, this particular manufacturer call has this it's really a filbert but it's a long filbert and they call it an Egbert, and uh, this is with uh, with uh, hog's hair. What they call an Egbert can make some uh, particularly interesting shapes. It can also drag on the end. Uh, can get for a large brush can get pretty uh, 
small marks as well as very, very broad marks. So your basic shapes are round, a flat, a filbert. This is an eggbert. And the last one I want to talk to you a little bit is going to be a liner brush. It is a long, a long uh, shape to it. Uh, it's, it's like a round, but it's got a long bristles on it. And these bristles allow you to get long, thin lines. And some artists would use these in maybe uh, doing hair or uh, even in signing their name sometimes. The guy's name is a rigger because uh, the artist would use it to do rigging on paintings of masted ships. So those are the, the main types that you'll see. Really the round, the flat, um, the filbert uh, riggers, and then some specialty brushes. There's a comber, there is a blending or fan brush. The next thing I want to talk to you about is just the different type of materials. There's really two type, the types that can be broken into and that down into, and that is a natural or a, a hair or a, a natural hair or a, uh, a synthetic. And I like the synthetics. Synthetics, if you I think I'll, I'll put a little link to the video talking about how I paint um, solvent free and sometimes the, some of the solvents will bother a they'll get flagging on the edge on the end of the bristles if you clean clean them off clean off the synthetics in a um, in a mineral spirits but I do like uh, the way they they use a synthetic to mimic um, a natural bristle brush uh, like a, a mongoose is an endangered that the, the way they harvest that um, that particular um, filament uh, kills the animal and so this is a this is actually from rosemary rosemary it's an eclipse and it's a it's a mongoose synthetic so uh, you you really have to try them out to see the different things that they do but that's the short course on it but you're really gonna have to determine and make some choices uh, about how you want to uh, the marks you want to make in your paintings and that's going to take some trial and error for you to find your way you don't have to go out and buy all these brushes you can uh, you can buy cheap brushes or less expensive brushes and try those out and see the marks they make and uh, that's a great way to to go about uh, finding what works for you and then when you're ready to make an investment make an investment in a higher quality brush and you'll tell the difference because a higher quality brush will tend not to lose its filaments uh, rosemary brushes are excellent brushes uh, I know uh, Princeton makes great brushes as well as um, Trakel there's the Trakel hog bristle brush. They make fantastic brushes here in the United States. Well, all seriousness aside, I hope that was helpful for you. So why do artists have all these brushes? And it's because unfortunately for some at the end of the day, you need to make a decision about the marks that you're going to make to convey the message in your painting that you want to convey. And all that plays into the style that will be you. And it'll be indistinguishable, I mean, distinguishable from anyone else because it's your style and it's based on decisions that you have made. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, if you have, hit, hit the like uh, button and give me a comment and let me know what other things you'd like to see in the series. Things that maybe took you a while to, to realize about brushes or even ask me some questions about brushes. I'd be glad to talk to you. So uh, subscribe over here. Um, check out the video over here for another video and until then well you know I'll see you later bye bye